Hello and welcome to Gullo's Garden Center. My name is Mr. Gullo and I will be your guide today. This is my family's business and I have been working here since I was 12 years old. Does anyone know what a family business is? I'll tell you, a family business is a business that is owned and operated. The workers are family and I have quite a few family members that work here. They are my dad, my brother, my sister, and my brother-in-law all work here as well. So we get to see each other almost every day. So you might be wondering, what is a garden center? Let's talk about that. Well, it has the word garden in it, so you can probably get things for your garden here, right? Yep. In fact, you can buy pretty much anything for your yard at a garden center. You can buy trees, flowers, shrubs, mulch, pottery, fertilizer, house plants, vegetable plants and seeds, decor for your yard, bird feeders, fountains, furniture, and yes, even buffaloes. During the months of November and December, the garden center transforms. It doesn't look much like it does in spring. We have Christmas trees, we have wreaths, we have poinsettias, everything you need for Christmas. And we're gonna take a look at all of that today. But before we go inside, I have a trivia question for you. Since we're virtual, you might be wondering, where is Gullows? Gullows is in Hamburg which is one town over from Orchard Park. And I have a bit of trivia for you. Did you know? Hamburg, where you're visiting today, along with Orchard Park and parts of West Seneca, where most of you live, used to all be one big town called Hamburg. They split in the year 1850, and Orchard Park was called East Hamburg until it was renamed Orchard Park in 1934. Okay, we've come inside out of the cold and behind me you can see some beautiful flowers. These are called poinsettias and they are very popular this time of year. Many people use them to decorate their homes, churches, and businesses. Now we are going to go to Luciano and Nella Gullo to learn some cool facts about these so you can be a poinsettia expert. All right, we are out in the trees now. Who's ready to take a look at some Christmas trees? Um, the first one we're going to look at is a Fraser fir, but before I talk about that, I want to talk about the differences. You notice that these trees, even though it's December, still have their needles. You might have noticed in your yard, there's a lot of trees that lost all their leaves. Um, so there are two different, main different types of trees. 
There are deciduous, those are the trees that lose their leaves. And there are evergreens, like the Fraser fir, which hold their needles year round. Um, this is my favorite tree, actually. We, my family puts one up every year. Um, thing I like about it is, if you look underneath, you can see the needles are, they kind of have a little bit of a bluish hue to them. And the branches are really strong for heavy ornaments. Um, these trees come from North Carolina. Um, quiz time. Does anyone know where North Carolina is? Let's take a look at the map. Is it the red state? The orange state? the yellow state, the blue state, or the green state. I'll give you a hint. These trees come from where their natural habitat is, which is the Southern Appalachian Mountains. Okay, if you guessed orange state, you're correct. Okay, the next tree we're gonna look at is the Douglas fir right here. Um, as you can see, these trees tend to be a little bit wider than the Fraser fir, and the color is a little bit more greenish than blue. Um, the thing I like about best about these ones is they have the most scent of all the Christmas trees. A um, couple facts about Douglas fir. These grow naturally in the wild out west. Um, and they can actually reach up to 300 feet tall and live over 1,000 years. Um, you might think that is impressive, and it definitely is, but there is another tree that grows out west that gets even taller and lives longer. If you've ever heard of redwoods, they can get almost 400 feet tall and live over 2,000 years. Now, these trees, although they're native to the west, they are grown in Pennsylvania. They can be grown in different locations. This is the redwood tree. If you've ever been to California where they grow, you may have been lucky enough to see them. I was, and it's like seeing a living skyscraper. The tallest one in the world is 380 feet tall and they can live over 2,000 years. Now, we wouldn't want to use a redwood as a Christmas tree, though, would we? I mean, you'd need a helicopter to decorate the top of it. All right, last but not least, we have one lonely con-color fir left here. Now, as you can see, this tree has longer needles than the Fraser fir or the Douglas fir. And like the Douglas fir, they also grow in the wild out west. But this is a very popular tree. Um, a lot of people actually plant them in their yards around here. The thing that I find most interesting about these is they do not smell like you would think for an evergreen. They actually smell like citrus. Some people think they smell like an orange, some will say a grapefruit, some will say a lemon. So it's a very unique tree. Okay, I think I found a good tree here for us to cut down and take home. Uh, it's a nice full Fraser fir, probably about seven and a half feet tall. Um, before I cut it down though, I want you to all guess how old this tree is. Do you think it's three years old, 20, 100? Um, we are gonna go to Luciano Gullo and he is going to tell us how to find out exactly how old this tree is. Now, I'm gonna need you to get your stump pieces out and follow along. Luciano, how old is that tree? Count the ranks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Is this tree 10 years old? Yeah. Okay, does everyone have their guesses in? Let's cut this down and see. Okay, so you might have noticed when you were handling your stump sample and counting your rings, you got a little bit of sap on your hands, some sticky stuff. Um, that actually blocks the tree from taking in water. So what we're gonna do is actually put a fresh cut on this with the saw, and then we will count the rings and see how old this tree is. Okay, so before we count, I wanna show you something. Now, we know the trees take in water through their roots, but after the water comes up through the roots, where does it go? It does not go through the middle here. It actually comes up through the bark. And let's count this tree and see how old it is. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This tree is eight years old. And you might also notice some of the rings are a little bit larger than the others. If it's a large ring, then the tree had a really good year and it grew a lot. Um, you can see it had two good years in a row there. Those are really large rings. Okay, we have the tree all bailed up and now all we got to do is tie it to the car roof and bring it home. I found this baler has many uses. It's also good for tying up kids. Just don't put them on the roof of your car with the tree, okay? Okay, we have our tree all loaded up and ready to go home to decorate. Um, now, I know some of you might be thinking, isn't it bad to cut down trees? I mean, trees are good for the environment. They clean the air, they provide us with oxygen, shade, they provide homes for wildlife. And yes, that is all true about trees, but Christmas trees are actually great for the environment. And I'm gonna tell you why. For every tree cut down on a Christmas tree farm, a new sapling, the word for a baby tree, is immediately planted in its place. Instead of cutting down trees and clearing the land to build things, Christmas tree farms have hundreds or even thousands of acres of trees cleaning our air and producing oxygen for us to breathe, providing shade and homes for wildlife. And the best part is they are 100% recyclable and biodegradable. They can be ground into mulch or composted into soil. The other option, artificial trees are made from plastic. They usually last seven or eight years and then are thrown into a landfill where they can take 500 or more years to decompose. Wow. Feel good knowing you are doing planet Earth a favor by putting up a real tree. Hello everyone. We have a book about snowmen. Have any of you ever built a snowman? I bet a lot of you have. Did you ever wonder what they do at night? Well, we're gonna find out in this book called Snowmen at Christmas by Carolyn Buhlner and pictures by Mark Buhlner. On Christmas Eve, I made a snowman. Very round and jolly. I dressed him up in red and green and trimmed his hat with holly. I saw his arms were trembling as if he couldn't wait. It made me start to wonder, how do snowmen celebrate? I think that while I'm snug in bed, dreaming of Christmas treats, 
the merry snowmen slip away and hurry through the streets. They glide down snowy avenues with lamplights all aglow, the sleeping city blanketed in freshly fallen snow. They pass by toy shop windows framed with twinkling lights, pausing for a peek or two at holiday delights. The snowmen gather from everywhere around for a Christmas party in the center of town. Waving to each other, they call out cheery greetings, all their friends and family so happy to be meeting. A few merry snowmen start trimming the square. Soon holly and icicles are strung everywhere. And then, reaching high for everyone to see, they hang balls of snow on the big Christmas tree. The snow children play freeze tag or red rover or climb in a stack till they wobble right over. The mothers lay out all kinds of cold treats, ice cream and snow cones and dainty iced sweets. Then the dance begins to the tune of a fiddle. All the snowmen line up and sashay down the middle. Someone says, hush, could that be a jingle? Then over the hill glides the snowman, Chris Kringle. He opens his sack with a jolly ho ho and pulls out their presents, each made out of snow. Santa slips, sips his cocoa, the reindeer romp and play, and then with a whistle, they're off on their way. Such fun snowmen have, but there's still one more thing. With hearts full of joy, they hold hands and they sing. While the fiddler plays and sweet silver bells ring, they sing songs about snow and the birth of a king. The children are sleepy, the grown-ups are yawning, the snowmen go home just as Christmas is dawning. They're all back in their places when Christmas Day starts, but these folks made of snow have a glow in their hearts. Their smiles are more tender, their eyes softly shine as the snowmen dream dreams of their Christmas time. Merry Christmas! And that concludes our virtual field trip. I hope you all enjoyed visiting Gullo's Garden Center and learning something new today. I'm now going to answer any questions you have. And when we're done, you can decorate your ornament to bring home to hang on your tree.